When Helen was a little girl, she really wanted a pet chicken. Her mom said, no chickens. So Helen took an egg from the refrigerator and made it a nest in her sock drawer. When the wind blew, Sue climbed to the tippy top branches of trees and rode the wind. Annie Oakley was my favorite TV heroine. My mom made my tricycle into a horse for the 4th of July parade. I was terrified by the Wizard of Oz. The monkeys lived in my closet and the witch lived outside my window. Hello, I am Judy Cook and I tell stories on cloth. Today I'm going to show you my journey from an idea to telling a visual story. My ideas come from my memories and conversations with other people. The first step is finding my idea and this cannot be forced. This is what I look like when I'm trying to force an idea. My garbage can is full. I'm frustrated. Any ideas I have had, if any, are fleeing out of my head as fast as they can. And I am not a happy artist. Of course then, these guys, my personal committee, show up to join the party with their running commentary on my ideas, artwork, and other things I should be doing, and blah 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 blah. If I am persistent, the committee gets bored and wanders off. After all, what do they know? They're just chickens. But if I listen, the ideas are there. They come to me as visual images. Like Helen, I store my ideas in the proverbial sock drawer and wait for them to hatch. Once I've settled on an idea, the fun begins. I've currently been working on a series called Scaring Ourselves Silly. In this series, I'm exploring the idea of how we purposely scare ourselves as little kids. Thinking of make-believe frightening things can be a form of empowerment. It's exciting to scare ourselves because we know that it can't really hurt us. These three pieces are called Me and the Wicked Witch. The movie The Wizard of Oz was first shown on TV in November 1956. We watched it at my cousin's house and then drove home on a dark, rainy night with the witch and monkeys following us. I scared myself every night by imagining the witch outside the window and the monkeys in my closet. To begin creating a series, first I do a stream of consciousness writing and write down everything I can remember about my memory. Then I create a mind map on which I write down every image I think that can go into my composition. This helps me figure out and keep track of what I'm thinking. Next, I research. This is one of my favorite parts of any project because I really get into exploring the topic. I do lots of reading and searching on the internet. For this one, I watch The Wizard of Oz read every line the Wicked Witch said, looked at many, many pictures of monkeys, found pictures of our car, the 1941 Chevy sedan, looked at family pictures of my brother, my cousin, and found many pictures of witches. From my research, I draw and draw and draw some more, exploring how to create the characters in the scene. To create the scene for this one, the first thing I did was draw my bedroom from memory. And then I found a picture of a bedroom that showed the ceiling. Next I did a rough drawing with the witch, the monkeys, the bed. And the final step in creating my bedroom was to put this sketch in Photoshop and swirl it a little bit to make it look more frightening. At this point, I began developing the characters. What do the monkeys look like? What do I look like? What do the other characters look like, and most especially, what does the witch look like? How do the characters interact with each other and their surroundings? Here are drawings of me, my brother, and my cousin. Kathy always had her blanket with her. Mike was always eating. I'm wearing my cowgirl hat and boots. We must have been really scared because Mike and I would never have sat that closely together. 
Next, I created the witch, and I must say she was the most fun to create. I didn't want her to look like the Wicked Witch in The Wizard of Oz, so I took a selfie, made my nose a little bigger, made my chin more pointy, lost a few teeth, added a few more wrinkles, and there we have a Wicked Witch. One important inanimate character in Scaring Ourselves Silly series is the power object. The power object gives a way out of the scary scene. I mean, the Wicked Witch's hands coming through the window is a pretty frightening. So I gave my character a bucket of water, which she can throw water on the witch and the witch will melt. Other power objects may be a magic cape or a trusty horse. Along the way, I'm thinking of what story am I trying to tell? Can it be told in one image, two, or more? Sometimes I don't know until I'm well into it. For me and the Wicked Witch, I did the final picture of the witch's hands coming into the bedroom first, but it seemed like more of the story needed telling. How we watched the original TV showing, the witch and the monkeys following us home, and then living in the closet and outside the window. So in true Star Wars fashion, I did two prequels to make a more complete story. Using a storyboard in the initial planning of series can be very helpful, especially if you're not sure where the story is going. It can also be valuable, as in this case, when I realized I had more to say. In each series, there comes a point when you go past the initial idea or memory and step off into the unknown. I call this the, and then what happens, moment. In Me and the Wicked Witch, it was realizing it needed a beginning, middle, and end. This took me past my initial idea of the witch in the bedroom, and the series became more interesting. Once I have figured out the composition, I create value studies. I used to never do this step, but now I find it very helpful. These are full-size drawings of the composition. Besides figuring out the lights and darks, they help me figure out how to layer the images on cloth. Another tool I've become especially fond of is color charts. When I was teaching myself to illustrate, I did a children's book about my mom and my dog. I did drawings, I did the storyboards, I did the value studies, and I did everything in black and white. And then when it came time to figure out what colors to use, I was stumped. And every time I got stumped, I would stop. It took me three years to finish that book. I really wish I would have known about color charts then. The color chart allows you to see how many colors you can mix from a base of four or five colors. They keep your colors consistent across multiple images in a series of work. They're also helpful in deciding which color the objects and characters should be. Should your witch be purple? Should your witch be green? Next, I make my tools. I use printmaking tools, including Thermofax, a form of silk screens, photo emulsion screen printing screens, stamps, and anything that will make texture. I use these tools along with freehand painting. I make full-size line drawings for each piece. From these drawings, I make stencils to create the photo emulsion screens. The stencils are created by drawing with black markers on acetate. The screens are then coated with photo emulsion and exposed to light to develop the image on the screen. So let's see, at this point, I have my idea. I've made the mind map. I've researched, I've developed my characters, I've figured out my story on the storyboard, I've done value studies, a color chart, and I've created my tools, and it's time to put it all together. All of my work starts as white fabric. I work primarily on silk. I create the backgrounds by dyeing the silk fabric or applying thickened dye with a brush and creating a large mono print. And me and the Wicked Witch, I created the background by painting the outlines of the room. After creating the background, I screen printed the outlines of the images onto the cloth a layer at a time. 
In this piece, the witch in the window was screened first, then the bed, then the window, then the closet, and so on. From that point on, I hand paint into the images, and I applied the monkey's last with a thermopack screen. I stop at each level to step back and look at how things are progressing and make notes. And eventually, it is done. So that is how my memories of being afraid of the Wizard of Oz became me and the Wicked Witch. And a memory of being Annie Oakley in the 4th of July parade became me and Annie Oakley. And a conversation with my friend about climbing trees became Sue and the wind. Now, you may be wondering what happened to Helen and her egg. Well, what really happened was that after a while, the egg got pretty stinky and rotten. And Helen's mom found it and threw it out. Soon after, Helen's parents brought home a Boston Terrier puppy named Pepper, who Helen loved with all her heart. But maybe there is room for some imagination in this story, with Helen imagining, imagining, or imagining, her adventures with her chicken is still incubating in my sock drawer. Thank you.